Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar. Before we get started, just wanted to let you know that all of our cybersecurity webinars are proudly supported by Aura. And you can visit our Aura Cybersecurity Center at cyberseniors.org forward slash Aura dash cybersecurity. Here you can find additional videos and resources on all things cybersecurity. And you can check out discounted plans from Aura at aura.com forward slash cyber seniors. All right, let's get going. Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's cybersecurity webinar. Today, we are going to be talking about how hackers and scammers use AI. I know AI is a big topic of conversation these days, and, um, and it's also important to talk about uh, this side of it because it does get used as well by hackers and scammers uh, and we want to be able to better understand how they're using it and how we can protect ourselves against this kind of new wave of, of style and type of scam. All right, so we are going to be uh, talking about, first of all, what artificial intelligence is. I'll give a brief history of artificial intelligence just so you can get a better understanding of what it really is, how it works, um, and where we are at, it, at with it right now. Uh, then we're gonna talk about how hackers actually employ AI, how they use it, uh, how AI is being used as well to combat hackers and scammers so on the other end of it, and then how you can protect yourself against AI cybersecurity threats. So first of all, uh, what is, uh, AI. So IBM defines AI as a field which combines computer science and robust data sets to enable problem solving. It also encompasses subfields of machine learning and deep learning, which are frequently mentioned in conjunction with artificial intelligence. And these disciplines are, compromised, are comprised of AI algorithms which seek to create expert systems, which make predictions or classifications based on input. Now, that may mean a whole lot of nothing to you because there's a lot of kind of, you know, different words in there that are within the AI field. So uh, to kind of contextualize uh, a bit more about what AI actually is and what we're actually saying here, uh, I think it's important to take you through a brief history of AI. This will have better help situate us in how this technology has developed, where it's at right now, and how and why it's being used in the way ways it's being used. So uh, to start us off, uh, really, uh, we might trace the beginning of AI back uh, to, to the beginning of, of, of computers generally, uh, but we'll start our timeline uh, for the sake of just quickness. Uh, in 1950, when Alan Turing, uh, you may be familiar with him, uh, invented uh, or introduced the Turing test. So basically, this is a test uh, for intelligence in a computer. Uh, and it requires uh, that a human being should be unable to distinguish the machine from another human being uh, using uh, the replies to questions uh, to put to both. So basically it's a test to see if something's smart enough to be able to basically be able to dupe a, a, a human into thinking a computer might be another human. Obviously this might've looked very different in 1950. We're not talking about the technologies we have now in terms of you know, language models and you know, things like chat GBT, uh, but this is the beginning of that sort of, a sort of test in, uh, in computing machinery and intelligence. Now in 1956, uh, we actually uh, get the, the Dartmouth conference uh, organized by John McCarthy and he is the one uh, widely considered to have uh, coined the term artificial intelligence. So that's where that term is, is coined. And so we're seeing more developments uh, in, in computers and how we're using them. Uh, and then we're beginning to be able to, you know, teach these computers to do basic tasks. So that's where we start to get this term artificial intelligence and see the beginning uh, of what we're talking about now. Now in the 1950s to the 1960s, the field of AI did experience a lot of growth and progress. Uh, researchers at that time were able to develop programs that were capable of solving you know, simple mathematical problems, uh, playing games, and, and simulating some, some human thought processes, but again, on very basic uh, levels. So we started to see some progress. And then there was kind of like a dead point 
uh, in the mid 1960s uh, to the mid 1970s called the AI winter, where there wasn't really a lot of development going on. But it came back with a pretty big um, boom in the 1980s and set in 1990s, uh, where they experienced a resurgence uh, with the development of what's known as expert systems. So that was mentioned uh, in, 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 in that definition. And an expert system is basically a piece of uh, software, which is programmed using artificial intelligence techniques, um, such as using, you know, databases of, of knowledge, or information uh, to offer advice or to make decisions in such areas. So basically we can feed a computer algorithm model certain data and we can help show it different patterns to make a decision so that it can make decisions. Again, these are based on very simple problems, um, but it does lead to the culmination basically in 1997 uh, you may, have remember, may remember this when IBM's Deep Blue computer uh, defeated the world chess champion, uh, Gary Kasparov. And this was sort of a demonstration uh, in, in the biggest way that they'd seen so far about what this technology was capable of and how, uh, you know, AI and, and, and sort of artificial intelligence might someday surpass our intelligence or maybe be able to use it uh, to, to advance beyond, you know, maybe uh, things that we could do. So this was really the first test of that. And then we continue to obviously expand on through the 2000s. And the big shift that happens in the 2000s, which is really what we're seeing the culmination of right now, is big data. So we start to get computer systems that are able to hold a lot more information, right? Uh, you can store two terabytes of, of your data in, in your iCloud. So we have these machines that are capable of just holding a lot of information, uh, which a lot of computers were just not able to do before. There was a limit uh, to that capacity. And what this allowed for was just to uh, start basically creating uh, machine learning. So basically, we can feed, we can create an algorithm that learns off of data the same way that expert systems do, but just to a much larger degree. And we're able to feed these machines so much and more information so that their knowledge base is just much bigger than they've ever been. With this, we also um, are able to get uh, to kind of deep learning, which basically is just adding extra layers on top of layers of this artificial intelligence. And these machines can start to basically learn themselves. So rather than, you know, in the early days where information was being fed and these machines were being taught, this is right, this is wrong, and this is the information you have, now the machines are able to make some of those distinctions on their own. So they're able to not only just hold the data and then make decisions based on what they're given, they are themselves able to process the data uh, and then uh, create new pathways of understanding and problem solving from that. So we get these sort of layers, uh, and this is really facilitated by big data. Uh, big data meaning all the information that you can actually physically store on a device, but also access to data. So social media plays a big role in this. Google plays a big role in this. All of us being online and sharing information about ourselves, uh, sharing uh, thoughts and stuff online, all of that is used and has been used to create uh, what we have now in AI, uh, which really brings us to kind of this point with things like open AI and, and chat GBT and these large language models, uh, they're able to do more complex kind of computations, right? They can look at images, uh, find patterns and recreate images where we get things like, you know, deep fake technology where you can recreate someone's face uh, or language models like chat GBT where these machines are able to analyze uh, patterns in which people speak or write to create uh, responses that feel more human. Art is impersonal um, and they can actually not only just uh, look at the data, the facts, the information, but those patterns in speech, those patterns in the way that we interact and recreate uh, a very close to human-like responses. So I wanted to contextualize that to show you where we're at and why there's been such a big boom in AI in the past five, 10 years and, and, and why we're seeing more of it. And it really does come down to data. All of the information that we have access to, these machines have access to, and that we're able to store it and keep it and continue to, to, to teach these models. So I hope that was a lot, it must've been, but 
I think it's great to, uh, to kind of contextualize ourselves here to understand why we're here, how this has happened, uh, and how it's different than it ever has been before. Macaulay, did you mean to stop sharing your screen? I did, because I just didn't want it to be a big <laughs> screen. As I was <laughs> monologue. monologue, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, but with that said, we'll jump back into things. So uh, that being said, how does AI work in kind of simple uh, terms? We'll go back to, to this just to, to talk about it again briefly. So we can think of uh, AI working in a bit of a five part loop, looped system. So we start with uh, data input. So AI systems uh, intake data that might be speech, text, images, uh, context, outcomes. Uh, they then process that data. So they interpret it, they make predictions about that data based on all of the information they have, and then they act. So they run, run uh, you know, what, they're, what program they're, they're programmed to run. And then we have an outcome. So based on this, uh, there's an outcome, it's successful or fail, or it's a success or failure. Uh, and then we analyze or assess that outcome. Um, so the machine assesses it, analyzes it, creates feedback. The feedback might come from just within the system or outside the system, right? Programmers might go in and go, that can work quite well. And they might make then adjustments to the algorithm that this, uh, you know, AI machine learning is based off of. Um, so they make those adjustments and then we start the pro and then they go back into, if they need to, they'll just go back into data processing, go back to stage two and go again, or they might go right back to the beginning, more data, more data, more data. And it just goes in this circle all the time. Uh, and that's kind of how we see this like, exponential growth uh, of, of capability. It's just test, retry, test, retry, make adjustments uh, to perfect how uh, these machines are understanding the data, how they're processing it. And eventually it does get to a point where they get better at doing all of these processes on their own. So at the beginning, uh, there might be more adjustments from like an outer perspective in terms of making adjustments to an algorithm that's teaching this thing. But at a certain point, uh, after a certain amount of information is fed and a certain amount of adjusting is done, uh, they can also start to make, and they, I mean AI, uh, these adjustments on their own. So that's, how it works. Um, it's obviously much more complicated uh, than I probably can understand. And, and I think most people can understand. And I think that is part of some of uh, maybe the hesitancy a lot of people have towards it is uh, when you get down uh, to, you know, how the algorithm are then processing or the, I guess the thought pattern that they're having when they're processing data, when it becomes so huge uh, to the point where it is, we can't, as humans, go in and analyze every single decision or choice that's made by this algorithm. It's just too much information that we would never be able to process ourselves. So there's certain aspects of this process that we don't necessarily fully understand or fully can't analyze. So that's kind of some of you know the, the craziness of the system and, and, and why uh, you know, there might be some hesitancy or fear, um, but also uh, why it's become so successful and so big so quickly. With that said, let's talk about how hackers are actually using AI. Uh, to start us off, I just want to uh, show a, a quick a video on um, some of these scams that we're seeing being uh, that are proliferating uh, with AI technology. So how to protect ourselves from some of the latest scams, both high tech and old fashioned as well. Uh, so Vicky is putting on her senior consumer investigative <laughs> correspondent hat back for this segment. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, it seems like every day we hear something new about AI. So I guess we shouldn't be surprised that now AI is, is being used for scams. Yeah, the criminals are really capitalizing on artificial intelligence. And one way they're doing it is through voice cloning. It's remarkable. You, your voice, which is on television all the time, the technology is out there, Craig, for someone to capture it with a computer and use all the bits and pieces of everything that you've said to make their own sentences. And so many of us are on social media too. So it's not just somebody who's on television. You put your voice out there probably in many social That's media creepy. voice. So the so. big scam they're warning about right now that emergency call, right? Craig, it's Bobby. I'm in jail. I'm in the hospital. I need money. Help me out. 
the red flag is the urgency and the ask for cash. Anytime you get a call like that from anybody who claims to be a friend or family member, pause. I mean, it might be legitimate, but 99.9% I was going to say, it depends on the friend or family member. <laughs> I was say, but... my family and friend group, it's a possibility. <laughs> it's a possibility. Yeah. But here's what you should do. Call that person back. Uh... Make sure it really is them. You can't even trust caller ID these days because they can spoof a phone number and make it look like it's coming from a number that you recognize. The AARP has a bonus tip here, too. Have a code word for your family. So you can be like, hey, what's the code word? Right. And if they don't tell you, Jill, then you know, hey, this person is not in my inner circle. Yeah, because I can only imagine a parent getting a call Oh. pretending that it's a child oh, saying we need money we have your I mean right how That's scary exactly is that right all right so a few extra tips on the end there uh including on that that segment on AI um uh so extra help there um but let's talk about uh some of of these techniques uh we talked about some of them there the ones that include you know like the grandparent scam the classic scams that are then now being basically made better more effective through AI uh, but there's other ways that this technology is being implemented for, for the worse. Um, so things like automated attacks, and, and, and I'll go through these, and as I go through these, I'll talk about kind of a bit of what can be done about some of them. Some of them are things that aren't really um, things that are within our, our exact control. They might be within our control if we have really great cybersecurity software that we're using, and that might be more important to protecting ourselves against uh, some of these um, you know, attacks. Some of them are, though, uh, social engineering attacks, and those are the ones that do impact us kind of directly and that we do have a sense of control over. So those are the ones that we're really going to focus on today uh, because they are the main ones that we have the capacity to uh, look out for and, and to prevent. Uh, but to start us off, automated attacks. So hackers more and more will use AI algorithms to automate their attacks. They can, this allows them to increase the speed and scalability and sophistication. So when they are downloading malware onto your device, uh, this malware is just uh, a lot smarter now than it might have used to be uh, able to get into different areas of your device uh, because of how they're built and coded to begin with. So the very technology they're just using uh, to do, you know, the more traditional type of hacking that we think of getting into our computer through a virus or whatever uh, is uh, getting more sophisticated. Uh, with something like this, it's not really up to, to us as individuals uh, to be able to fight this off. This is done through uh, the, um, you know, cybersecurity softwares that we implement and use. So making sure that we're using um, an antivirus and some sort of software like that, making sure we're keeping it up to date, making sure we're keeping our systems up to date. Things are moving much quicker now than they used to. So it's never been more important to make sure that we keep these things up to date. Now, phishing and social engineering, these are the kinds of scams uh, and attacks that we may be uh, maybe more vulnerable to, but also that we have, again, the capacity to be able to do something about. So AI powered tools can right, analyze vast amounts of data we just talked about. That, that is the big shift that's happened in the past 10 years is this analysis of data. So though even though this can be used for great things like helping us you know, get better you know, medical diagnosis based on a CT scan, uh, it can also be used to analyze um, you know, emails and messages and, and, and content online to create a profile about a potential victim so that, you know, they can send out uh, personalized phishing emails and messages and use chat bots, giving them increasing chances of successful scam because it feels realer, they have more information on you, uh, and then they're able uh, to create just basically a more convincing uh, phishing email or message to you. Deepfake technology is another component of this that can really, uh, you know, hurt us. So, AI generated deep fake videos and audios, as we talked about, right? We can replicate people's voices to sound a lot like their voice, even just with a small clip of audio of their voice. And it can be used to impersonate individuals um, in, and lead to identity theft or manipulation uh, of, of personal opinions or public opinion. So we're seeing this being used, obviously, on the one-to-one -one basis. You're just you're getting scammed personally, maybe through a grandparent scam. It sounds like your grandchild is calling you, but it's not really them. Uh, they've manipulated their voice. But this is also being used on a grander scale, right? Uh, we we talked about this before. Misinformation online, deep fake technology is a huge component about how a lot of this is being spread. It is not always easy to to see. Uh, so it's increasing. It's very scary because 
you know, it's just hard to tell sometimes, but it's out there. And so we do need to be really critical of what we're seeing, uh, not only in, 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 you know, a personal sense and phone calls and emails, but also what we're seeing online generally uh, when it comes uh, to, you know, widely dispersed information. Uh, now, malware detection evasion as well, right? So AI uh, can be used to create really smart and, and, and really quickly changing malware that can evade those traditional security measures by, by adapting its behavior to bypass detection systems. So again, this is a point where it's really important to make sure you have very good antivirus software and we're keeping it updated um, and that the antivirus software that they're using, the company that we're using has this as top of mind that this is a big concern for them and something that they're actively working at, like Aura. And data breaches and data mining. So again, coming back to data, right? Uh, when we talk about data breaches, uh, someone getting into not necessarily our system, but maybe a company's uh, system and breaching their data. Uh, this, when it happens, uh, might be happening at a quicker and larger scale now. So there may be less time to shut it down before a lot of that information uh, is gone to and before weaknesses are exploited uh, because uh, these uh, you know, machines can just crawl really quickly and collect and analyze a lot of data really quickly. Uh, and then lastly, password cracking. So AI can accelerate that process of cracking passwords by using machine learning techniques to analyze patterns and predict likely combinations. This is something that we actually do have power in as well, creating really complicated and super random passwords, right? Uh, machine learning works by analyzing patterns. So uh, it doesn't often do anything that you wouldn't really expect it to or that, you know, it can't find elsewhere. So the more uh, jumbled and random and long we make our passwords, we still can protect these against this sort of password cracking uh, because they're going to be going, as I said, for those likely patterns and doing it that way to try to crack a password. Uh, so the more unique your password is, uh, the more likelihood uh, that it will be safe against a AI uh, powered cra password cracking, you know, uh, technology. All right. So those are kind of some of the ways it's being employed. Uh, and today we're going to talk about two really specific uh, AI enabled scams slash hacks. Uh, and we touched on them in, in that video. Uh, but these ones, again, are really relevant to us. And they're ones that we are more and more likely to experience. And so we wanna be prepared for when they come. So first of all is the voice duplication and deep fakes, the vishing. Uh, so basically what happens in this scenario is scammers are able to use short audio clips uh, of people posted online and duplicate their voices. Uh, and sometimes this doesn't necessarily need to be that, they can just change their voice, but um, it can be a small amount. So you can imagine how this might play out uh, and, and make something like the grandparent scam harder to detect. If you have a grandchild and they are, uh, you know, online, their voice might be out there. If there's any way to, to, tag, to trace them back to you through social media, um, they may have, you know, a perfect scenario to duplicate that voice to scam you. So they basically take this information and they're able to analyze it uh, and place, um, you know, basically something over their voice that when they speak makes it sound uh, like the person they're duplicating. Um, so it's called voice synthesis and it, yeah, it involves analyzing a person's voice and then generating new speech that sounds just like that person. So the AI is trained to learn the unique characteristics of someone's speech pattern. Um, and this doesn't just include kind of the sound, this may also help them, uh, you know, kind of the cadence of it. A lot of the time, uh, when we like talk about voice changing, there's also sometimes there's stuff with like cadence, but it's getting better at analyzing that sort of stuff too. So even those patterns uh, can be replicated and recreated. Um, and obviously this technology also has a lot of legitimate uses. Uh, it's used in, in voice assistance or automated customer service. So these are used for both good and bad, uh, but it's here, the technology is getting better. And so it's something we just really need to be aware of. Uh, and how to protect ourselves. So as was mentioned again in the video, uh, one of the top ways we can protect ourselves from these type of vishing scams 
uh, especially with family members and close loved ones and um, friends, is some sort of a family password that you share with your loved ones uh, to use when you talk by phone. So in the case that something happens, someone calls you, says they're in trouble and they're making these demands, it's very urgent, you can ask for your family password or your secret password. It can be just a simple phrase, but something that you can call on and keep between you to make sure you uh, can, you know, ensure that it, it's actually the right person. This feels in some way out of, you know, uh, a, a movie or like a spy movie where they have to say some particular word, but that's the reality we're living in now because that's the technology has caught up to be able to do this. Um, always be skeptical of any, any unexpected or emotional or threatening messages, especially when they're asking you to act quickly, especially when they're asking for money um, and that it needs to be delivered immediately. Uh, as I said, you know, you can always hang up and call back. Uh, and if you say you're going to hang up, a great telltale sign is that they will beg you not to hang up uh, because they know that if you call back, you will reach a different number because they probably spoofed a caller ID or a number to trick you. Um, and always consider using, there is ways that we can use technology and AI on the other hand to combat AI. Uh, and so we can use call assistance uh, like Aura's, uh, Aura's has to screen your calls. Um, basically works the same way that you would imagine, you know, if you ever log into um, your account and it asks you to solve a, a puzzle, it's, it's somewhat similar. It stops the caller on the way, it asks them to identify themselves and it uh, kind of an, analyzes that response and only if it determines that it is a real person calling you will it let that person through. Um, so an extra added layer of protection. Uh, you still have to be uh, on, on top of it. You still have to be, um, you know, on, 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 on your tiptoes a bit, uh, but it will help uh, quite a bit and, and, and kind of uh, steer away some of those calls. So a great tool to have at your disposal. Uh, now, another thing to talk about are uh, text tone impersonations. So traditional phishing. Uh, so phishing emails, right? Uh, we are all familiar with these. Um, and we might be familiar with the, you know, traditional ways that you've been told to uh, deal with them or to interpret them or to look out for them. Uh, these phishing emails are getting more sophisticated uh, looking way better, uh, more close to the real company or government communicator, the language might be better. Uh, so some of the traditional, you know, ways we might have used, like looking for bad grammar, may not be the best anymore. Uh, we have to kind of step up our game when it comes to identifying these emails. So how are they working and how are they getting better? Uh, AI models are being trained by showing them examples of content. So this is going back to those language models, things like ChatGPT. This is the exact time, type of technology that things like ChatGPT are working to analyze um, our language. Um, so they're trained by showing them example content. So some scammers use legitimate communication to train them to create extremely realistic impersonations of real people, uh, especially emails and texts from scammers. So these things are getting, uh, you know, you might not see the, the all the grammatical errors or thing language it seems quite off now um, it's going to be more legitimate sounding uh, and more in line with what you'd expect uh, from your email from you know the American Express or whatever it is so how can you protect yourself against this um, right as I said simply looking out for those spelling or grammar errors it's not going to be necessarily enough anymore stuff you can do. Save the real emails of companies and organizations that frequently contact you. So save their email address in your contacts uh, so that uh, when you get one, you know and are familiar that it is from the company. Uh, so find those legitimate ones that you know you have. Save those emails so you have them uh, to check against. Um, if you feel that something's off ever, and again, really the best thing here, use our gut. So call the organization or company at a known number. So if it's your bank, look in the back of your debit card for the phone number or credit card for the phone number listed there and call them directly. You still can use tools like Google to find the correct phone number. Just make sure you're visiting the right website um, to locate that phone number uh, when you're calling them. So contact them uh, and verify the communication. 
and also never click on links from unknown senders. And as always, you can always hold your cursor over those URLs to preview them before clicking them. Um, so uh, we've talked about this, even if a URL is listed as a URL, uh, it could still be something underneath. So even if it's not just a piece of text that says click here, and then it's like a underlined uh, hyperlink, right? So something you can click on to take you to a website. They can even put in www.cyberseniors.org uh, and then they can hyperlink that, but it actually doesn't lead to cyberseniors.org. It leads to something else. And the only way you can see where it's actually leading is to hover that mouse over the link, don't click on it. Uh, and then you should be able to see where it's going to take you. That kind of pops up at the bottom. Um, I can show you this later. If anyone is not sure how to do that, how to do that just let me know. So those are kind of some of the two big things that you're going to be dealing with personally when it comes to AI. Um, but as we talked about earlier, there are some of uh, those attacks and, and methodologies that, that hackers are using, using AI. There are things that we personally don't really have too much control over uh, on a day to day. Uh, so obviously consider using proactive AI based tools to protect yourself. Aura has great tools in this sphere and they also have ones that can protect ourselves against uh, those more personal attacks. So Aura's AI powered call assistant, right? We talked about can pick up those unknown calls on your behalf and screen them, screen them for spam or scam. Uh, and it also keeps your calls and messages safe uh, with smart spam blocking call screening and that uses that. So you can use these tools. Um, again, if you have tools already that you're happy with, with that, but there are other tools out there specifically dealing uh, with the uh, booming AI cybersecurity threat. So do ensure that you know the, the platforms you're using to protect yourself uh, do have a comprehensive plan against this. Do your research, make sure that they are prioritizing this because this is what the future of cybersecurity looks like, it's what the future of our technology looks like. And a last word uh, before we go into questions, AI is here. So obviously there's a lot of negative, there also is positive talk about AI and we may want to just uh, do everything possible to avoid it because it's you know, horrible or we just don't care about it, uh, but it is increasingly unavoidable. So it's so important to keep ourselves up to date with the latest, latest developments with AI because um, it's going to keep us safe. So if we aren't aware of how AI is being used in cybersecurity, how it's being used to scam us, what these technologies are uh, and what they're capable of, we may not know when we get one of those calls that's using deepfake technology to replicate someone's voice, right? So it's so, so important that we keep up with the news and understand uh, how this technology is developing so that we're not caught off guard by it, um, especially when it comes to cyber security. And I will say that it does have obviously the potential also to do a lot of good and it does do a lot of good. So we should see both sides of it, uh, but as with everything, there's a good and bad side to it. Uh, we need to uh, make ourselves aware and keep ourselves safe against the bad. So if you do have any more questions about this topic, you can always call us uh, toll free at Cyber Seniors at 844-217-3057 or visit us online at cyberseniors.org uh, and visit our cybersecurity center, cyberseniors.org forward slash aura dash cybersecurity. Uh, we always have more information there and in our blogs going over a lot of the topics that we have gone over. So look out for that. And as always, you can access those discounted Aura plans uh, through uh, Cyber Seniors. So if you go to Aura.com forward slash Cyber Seniors, you'd have access to discounted Aura plans. So make sure you're protecting yourself, um, finding the right fit for you in terms of protection uh, and keeping up to date uh, and keeping yourself knowledgeable.